GCF is usually everyone's um, easier topic when it comes to factoring. Grouping is usually the most confusing for students. So I hope to make it a lot easier for you to understand. And the fact is, if you can do GCF, you can do factor by grouping. So um, what I usually do with my GCF before I show you factor by grouping is show you a couple examples of how it's um, how it's easier to do um, the end of the grouping problem by referring to GCF. So if I had um, I'm just going to give you a couple of different problems. 3x. Um. Okay. What this is, is this is kind of like GCF problems. And this is the very end of your factor by grouping. And what we want you to figure out is how easily this is um, comparable to GCF and how we're actually going to use this in our last step of factor by grouping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this. A lot of people will not see this as a GCF problem. They'll just see this as confusing. So I'm going to rewrite this as xy minus 2y. If I had xy minus 2y, can y'all see what the GCF is of this particular polynomial? What do they have in common? A y. If I had taken out a y, I would be left with x and minus 2. If I took a y out from the y, the y's would cancel, and I'm just left with the x. If I took a y out of this last term, I'm just left with the x minus 2. Okay? Now, I want you to look at the one that I just have written beside it. It's pretty similar to that, except instead of the y, I actually have y plus 2 in parentheses. So this y plus 2 and this y plus 2 is what this polynomial has in common. This is their GCF. So if I took out a GCF of y plus 2, I would be left with just the x. If I try to put it underneath it, that would cancel out. And I would just be left with the x. If I put that underneath it, that would cancel out. And I'm just left with the minus 2. Okay? A lot of people, that blows their mind the first time, so that's why we have three examples. And so again, let's look at the next problem, and let's see what's the GCF of our, our second example. So the x minus 1 is what they have in common. So if I've taken out an x minus 1 as my GCF, I'm left with the z plus 4, because the x minus 1 cancels with that first term. And the x minus 1 cancels with the second term, and I'm just left with the 4. Okay, so that's just factoring it using GCF. And then the last example, we have an x minus 4 that's common to both groups. So if I factor out that x minus 4, I'm going to be left with the 3x in front and the minus 4 in between. Now this is our last step to factor by grouping. This is GCF, but it's also our last step in factor by grouping. So let's look at our factor by grouping. And what we do when we do factor by grouping is we're taking the GCF of your first two terms and then the GCF of your last two terms. So let's do that. Let's look at our first two terms. What is the GCF of xy plus 2x? Now I'm going to rewrite it bigger so I can cover it up. Okay, so what is the GCF of my xy plus 2x? Well, they have an x in common. So if I've taken out, and I'm going to cover it up that way. If I take out the GCF of x, I'm going to be left with y plus 2. If I take out an x from the first group, I'm just left with y. If I take out an x in the second group, I'm just left with 2. Okay, now I'm going to bring this little sign down, this plus sign. And I'm going to do the same thing for the last two terms. I'm going to cover up the first two and just look at the last two. What is the GCF of 6y plus 12? Well, what's the GCF of 6 and 12? The biggest number that will go into both 6 and 12. Well, 6. And if I take out a 6, I'm going to be left with y for my first term plus 2. 
Six will go into 12 two times, okay? The thing about grouping is when you do factor by grouping and you do your little GCF of your first two terms, GCF of the last two terms, your parentheses will always match. Now let's bring back the paper that I just did. Notice that our parentheses always match. That was our GCF. And when we factored out our GCF, that's when we had it in factored form. So let's look to see what you think we'll do next. We have our GCF factored out on the first two, the GCF factored out on the second two, and we have y plus 2 as the same thing in the polynomials on both. That's going to be our GCF. That's what we're going to factor out. When we factor out that y plus 2, I'm going to be left with x in the front and plus 6 in the back. All right, so our steps for factoring by grouping is you have to take the GCF of your first two terms, and I'm going to rewrite this again, the GCF of the last two terms, and then do that big GCF at the end with the polynomial, and you have it in factored form. So you're taking three different GCFs. All right, so I've rewritten this so I have a little more space. And I'm going to do the GCF of my first two terms. So what will go into both 5 and 15? Well, 5 will. For my x squared and my x, the one with the smallest exponent, x, will be my GCF. And if I'm left, what am I left with? I have, well, the 5 will cancel out with the 5. If I take 1x from 2, I'm just left with 1. The 5 will go into 15 three times. The x is cancel. Bring down my plus sign. And now I take the GCF of my last two terms. What do we have? We have 2xy plus 6y. What will come out as a GCF? Well, 2 will come out for the numbers, and y will come out for my variables. So if I take a 2 and a y for my first term, I'm only left with x. If I take a 2 from my 6, I'm going to be left with 3, and the y's are going to cancel out. Now notice, the parentheses match. What's going to come out? The x plus 3 comes out, and I'm left with 5x plus 2y. That's going to be left, and that's in factored form. We have two more left, and I'll do it on my next video.